Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut PC requirements have been revealed. AMD has launched new Pro Series of 8000G desktop and mobile CPUs. PlayStation 5 Pro to get faster Zen 2 CPU mode. And new GPU deals are here. And they're massive. Alright, so first we have the Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut PC crossplay. And system requirements have been revealed. So this is a perfect looking game for the Sonys. And now it's already in, coming in PC platform. So it's very exciting. If you're looking into the requirements, let's see this particular thing here and as you can see this is a sony overlay for our pc which is interesting because they're bringing in this overlay that replicates playstation 5 but for pc isn't that interesting that they would do that i didn't think they would be you know doing such thing because as you can clearly tell this is a playstation overlay from from sony of course yeah this is this literally looks like exactly like playstation 5 but not really the case but yeah it's running on pc basically you could say it's a launcher for playstation 5 but you know in pc but it's really strange anyway i don't know why they even tried to make such thing but you know i guess it gives you the aesthetics for the playstation 5 i guess all right so here it is this is the whole list of the pc requirements or the specs requirement for your pc that you see if your pc can run ghost of tsushima just like can it run crisis well hopefully that won't be the case here so at first when we look into here is the presets very low medium high very high for our average performance we're looking at 720p 30 fps 1080p 60 1440p 60 or 4k 30 and 4k 60 fps this is the preset they're going for so for very low performance which i definitely do not recommend because at 720p also at 30 fps isn't really that much exciting in terms of gaming so for processor we're looking at intel core i3 7 7100 and amd ryzen 3 1200 pretty old processors right there so yeah it's kind of outdated and of course if you look into the gpus it's they're using the geforce gtx 960 and the amd radeon rx 5500 xt surprisingly enough 5500 xt is quite recent so that tells you that 5500 xt isn't that good in terms of gpu power of course memory would be 8 gigs and storage will be same which is 75 gigs hdd i don't think hdd is recommended at all std is the way to go and the weird thing is they never added windows 11 which is strange all over the board yeah that's pretty weird anyway in medium preset we're looking at intel core i5 8600 not bad and ryzen 5 3600 also a decent processor pairing with the geforce rtx 2060 and the AMD Radeon RX 600 XT, which is not bad either. Of course, the recommended memory would be 16 gigs. And yeah, the space remains the same, which is pretty decent. 75 gigs SSD space is not that much for a game like this. And it's a pretty good looking game. For high preset, we're looking at the 11400 from Intel and the Ryzen 5 5600, which is pretty decent. And of course, the RTX 3070, because, you know, we're looking into the higher settings, which is the 440p 60 FPS. So obviously, it will be a smooth play. I don't think 4K 30 is that much fun to play maybe only the visuals but again it's in highest preset of course 16 gigs remains the same and also in very high we're looking at the i5 11400 and amd ryzen 5 to 600 pairing with the geforce rtx 4080 or the 7900 xt from amd so all this graphic settings looks like it's pretty much obvious that it's not a cpu demanding game because you're only utilizing the i5 or the ryzen 5 series of processors so obviously it's not gonna be a cpu demanding game so that's pretty obvious here but in terms of gpu it is also obvious it's gonna be yes graphics heavy game as we all know that so not a bad pc requirement it's kind of expected and my question would be however though if this 4k 30 fps from high settings is ray tracing enabled or disabled i am not sure similarly for very high 4k 60 fps i don't think this is my opinion i don't think 4k 60 fps in terms of ray tracing would be good but we'll see about that all in all this game looks absolutely fantastic obviously because if you look into the visuals nobody but it would like to not play this game because it's a beautiful looking game and it's pretty big and also it comes it comes with the director's cut with special features so you don't want to miss this game so yeah pc gamers finally get to enjoy this game next up amd has launched the ryzen pro 8000g desktop and ryzen pro 8040 mobile business cpu so basically they're telling this a business cpus because they are mainly focusing on ai basically so basically they're powered with ai amd ryzen ai pro which is interesting because this is mainly focusing on ai work workload meaning that it's going to be business focused but i guess it can also run games we don't know for sure the, the two series from ryzen for the desktop of course and for also for the laptop both focusing on the ai workload which is interesting because you know amd now focusing on ai just like nvidia is like a, a new entry to the market i guess and of course they've also introduced amd pro security i guess ai has to do it a lot with the security and of course they're also comparing the amd versus intel powered pcs and again it's going to be a lot of you know i i wouldn't say bs 
but some kind of things nitpicking going on but anyway that's not the main issue here so if you look into here basically if you, this is the whole lineup for the mobile 8040 series so the first stop of the line flagship we're looking at ryzen 9 pro 8945 hs and it's an 8 core processor 8 core 16 thread of course and the base we're looking at 4 gigahertz boosting up to 5.2 not bad not bad 24 megabytes of cache and also the rated tdp we're looking at 35 to 54 watts of course for laptop that is the case same goes for ryzen 7 pro 8845 hs it's also going to be an 8 core 16 thread and the clocks are a bit lower 3.8 to 5.1 24 megabytes remains the same and the tdp also remains the same the ryzen 7 pro 8840 hs however goes down a little bit lower which is not that bad because you know the boost clock is remains 5.1 but the base clock is 3.3 and the rest of the things remain same except the tdp which is 20 to 28 watts the ryzen 5 pro 8645 hs however is quite faster in terms of base clock which is expected 4.3 to 5.0 gigahertz also it's going to be a 6 core 12 trust processors with 22 megabytes of l3 cache 35 to 54 watts tdp ryzen 5 pro 8640 hs is a bit toned down which is 3.5 to 4.9 and 22 megabytes also a toned down tdp which is 20 to 28 watts we also have three more processor for the u series basically which is the ryzen 7 pro 8840u basically not that much power hungry as you can already tell 15 to 28 watts and the specs are similar as you can see with the ryzen 7 pro 24 megabytes but the base clock is 3.3 the ryzen 5 pro 8640u 15 to 28 watts tdp as basically that is the case and the rest of the specs are aligning with the 8640hs and for the 8540u we get to see a bit cut down for this one which is 3.2 to 4.9 and the rest of the things are similar now this is the main particular thing because this is for desktop of course this is the ryzen 7 pro 8700g the g series of course and of course these are pro meaning this is for ai obviously which we can already tell 5.1 gigahertz to 4.2 basically 4.2 to 5.1 is an altered but it's a really weird way to date to do that but anyways 8 core 16 threads 24 megabytes 45 to 65 watts because it's an extra processor so 65 watts is expected but i'm guessing it can go beyond that because you know desktop it can overclock ryzen 5 pro 8600g 8500g 8300g from the ryzen 3 all these specs are right over here and well basically for the ryzen 5 series we're looking at boost clock of 5 gigahertz but the base clock for the 8600g is 4.35 and the 8500g is 3.55 the rest of the things are same which is the 22 megabytes of l3 cache and the tdp also remains the same and lastly the ryzen 3 pro 8300g which is the 4.9 which is the boost boost clock and the base clock is 3.45 4 core 8 threads processor and 12 megabytes of l3 cache again 65 watts of tdp and we also have another series which is interesting which is the ge series or basically all this but mimicking it with the ge basically all of them are 35 watts and the specs are near similar so we don't have to go through all of that near similar just that it is a 35 watt tdp so lower consumption in this case so in general these processors are basically for business oriented desktop or laptops but i think they can gain because when you look into these clocks here they're they're clicking high like 5 gigahertz and so these are good enough for gaming of course but obviously they're focusing on ai workload so i guess if you want to workstation plus gaming plus business i guess it works next step from the verge we have some information which is the sony ps5 pro is gonna be real of course and the developers have some insights one particular insight that i would really want to focus on which is quite interesting so we already know that the playstation 5 pro the project trinity will be coming with zen 2 processor and the whole community the pc community or the gaming community were like zen 2 is pretty old for a processor architecture right well obviously we have zen 4 now so yeah it is pretty old like damn pretty old so people are concerned that it's not going to be enough for gaming and blah 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 right but the developers have something interesting to say so one of the developers have gave their insight which is trinity has a mode that targets 3.85 gigahertz cpu frequency says sony in a documented to developers so basically they're saying that there's a, a cpu mode which is called i guess trinity mode i don't know they don't really say that but i guess it would be called like that which is targeting around 3.85 gigahertz cpu frequency so still i would say it's not that much in terms of you know modern day cpu because 3.85 is pretty low still because most of the modern day cpus are reaching like 4 gigahertz or beyond that which is sometimes 4.5 or 5 gigahertz on top of the line cpu so yeah basically it's still lower but it's still better than what ps5 can provide they also include that that's around 10 percent more than the regular ps5 which is obviously yeah it's gonna be higher so sony will offer developers the ability to pick between standard modes which is at 3.5 gigahertz which is i think is basically the same as the ps5 
and a high CPU frequency mode at 3.85, which is kind of strange to me because why are they giving you that option of standard mode and high CPU frequency mode? Because, you know, the higher CPU, the better uh, the output, obviously, which also results in more heat consumption, heat output, I should say. So, yeah, uh, it's strange that they would do such thing because, you know, why would you want to run a standard mode that gives you less performance at the same time? You can also, you know, toggle it to high CPU frequency mode. Why not just make it the norm in terms of play PlayStation 5 Pro? It's quite strange, but at least they have that option, which is 3.85 gigahertz, which is a 10% boost, but it's still not enough in my opinion because it's too low. I guess this is like a damage control or something. I don't know, but it's still not enough, but at least it's better than nothing. But question is, is it going to be good enough for, you know, GTA 6? We'll see about that. All right. Lastly, we have some great GPUs you'll see. So let's look into it, shall we? So firstly, we have the ASRock AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT Phantom Gaming. This particular GPU got so many price cuts now, and it's also getting more price cuts. So it's not a huge price cut from 739 or 749 to 699, around 30 to 40 dollars, or maybe like 50 dollars. Price cuts are not bad. 699, we're getting this particular GPU, so decent price cut here. We also got the Sapphire Pulse AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT, which got 16 percent price cut, which was pretty pricey. I'm not gonna lie, 829 for 7900 XT was not a good deal, but it seems like 699 seems like a sweet spot here. 16 percent price cut, so not bad either. We also got some aim, another AMD GPU here, which is the RX 7900 XT from Asus Tough, and we're getting 637 for 637 euros for, of course, the UK audience here. So obviously, that's another good purchase if you want to buy it, of course. So pretty decent. And we also got some NVIDIA GPUs. The RTX 4070 Ti 12 gigs got a good price cut here, which is the 789. So not bad. And another price cut of 779, which is a 7% price cut here from 839 to 779. Even though it's pricier, not a bad deal. And the last one, we got the RTX 4070 12 gigs here. Pretty decent looking card from PNY, but still, I mean, PNY does make some uh, sketchy cards, but I wouldn't really say sketchy for the RTX 4070 because it looks decent enough. But it's getting 589, previously 629, only 6% cut, but it's a cut still, so not bad. However, this particular card, I would say better to avoid because there are other models, but still, this one is the cheapest here. There are some decent price cuts for the AMD RX 7900 XT, of course, so all of them, and of course, the RTX 4070 Ti and the 4070 getting some price cuts here. So yeah, if you're interested, check in the link in the description. We get to, you get the Amazon F2 links. So what do you think about the AMD Ryzen AI processor here? Their first AI processors mainly focusing on AI, but obviously I don't think this is going to be a problem for gaming. So an all-rounder CPU maybe? That's a possibility. So if you're interested. So yeah, let's see how this can shift the CPU market. Hopefully the pricing will be right.